What's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, but most likely on YouTube. Give us a like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon, hit that share, and subscribe with Yo's Comp. And today, in this solo deconstruction for 31 Days of Deconstruction, we are talking about the film Mosquito State 2020. Wall Street data analyst Richard Boca sees ominous patterns. His computer models are behaving erratically, as are the swarms of mosquitoes breeding in his apartment, an infestation that attends his psychological meltdown. Directed by Philip Jan Rimza, written by Philip Jan Rimza, Mario Zermeno, starring Bo Knapp, Charlotte Vega, and Jack Kesey, as well as Oliver Martinez. So... This film was made in 2020, but just released 2021 on a Shutter, um, which is a, a really interesting app. We didn't, we are not paid by them. We're not paid by anybody, but Shutter has some pretty cool movies on it. And I was interested in the the initial trailer for this film. Uh, it seems to be an. I can't really say it's an art house. I guess it is an art house sort of horror film, a psychological terror, psychological horror film. But here's my issue, like. Danny and I, I, w I wouldn't say we usually fawn over horror films, uh, but certainly just from the basic premise of a guy who is psychologically destroyed and he starts to be obsessed with these mosquitoes and they run his life, I figured with this sort of artistic look to it, I'd be in for it. And I am in an aesthetics case, but I gotta say that this movie pretty much falls short of expectations. Now, I don't know where the storyline would go. The general storyline in something like this, if it's about a guy who's able to control mosquitoes or has some sort of uh, kinship with these blood-sucking insects, you can think that it's going to go in some sort of Ben slash Willard sort of film where a guy is able to use these mosquitoes to attack people. Now, that's the easy way to go with this type of horror films. And this movie does not go in that direction. I don't want to spoil the film, but I will say that it is very much underwhelming. As beautiful as the film looks, it looks like it's directed really well, uh, as the scenes are, not the film in a total. Um, the acting is really good. I gotta give a, a great um, applause to Bo Knapp. It sounds like the phrase Bo Appetit, but his name is Bo Knapp. Uh, he plays the main character, Richard Boca, who uh, seems like a fellow who has some sort of uh, social anxiety disorder, as well as some sort of, um, there, there's just, just, there's something off about him, I guess, if you could say, uh, physically and personally. He just has this very sheltered, very apprehensive style about him. We almost think it's almost like a psychological thing that's with him. Or even a physical thing with him because he walks over in the slouch. He has this sort of extended jaw. He's very quiet. Um, but either way, it's a really interesting character performance. Uh, because it's not like a guy who... They, somebody compared this film to The Fly for some reason. I guess it's because there's mosquitoes in it. Or about a man who's transforming into something else. Um, and he, he already starts out sort of already with this... I wouldn't say physical deformity, but just the way that the character is played has this sort of social deformity, I would say. Um, and eventually, you know, he keeps getting attacked by these mosquitoes, or he welcomes the, these bites from these mosquitoes, and they leave very gigantic welts on his body. Like, he has a, a, a really bad um, reaction to all these mosquito bites. But, I mean, I mean, there's like hundreds of them in his room, or even and it turns to thousands later on. But, you know, it's a physical transformation, but it really leads to nothing. And this movie takes place in 2007, so there's, like, <laughs> uh, after-the-fact warning signs of presidents and money and stock and stuff like that. I have absolutely no idea about Wall Street. I have no idea how it runs. Usually people say it's a guessing game, which is probably true. So we, we do deal with a little bit with um, um, techno babble on that end. Not too much, thankfully. But when it happens, you're almost like, what the hell are these people talking about, if you're not in Wall Street? Um, and we have this, so the, Richard is uh, this character who is the golden boy because he, he created this analyst um, program that helps this company that he's working for make money. He's working under the 
character, Edward Werner, who's played by Oliver Martinez. I'm um, seen in a couple of films. Um, he's this um, very rich boss, and there's a uh, there's there's at this starts out with this party, and he meets this random young woman played by Sh uh, Charlotte Vega, who plays Lena de Alcazar. Very gorgeous woman. Um, she sort of looks like a a model esque version of the the young woman who plays Captain Marvel and stuff like that. She's just something familiar about her face. Either way, she it's it bizarre how. I don't understand. I guess she is a, a kind person. She's a sweet person. She's able to overlook uh, Richard's sort of overt weirdness, and she goes to his apartment to stay over. And you know, he just—he's just like a weird. He's a very weird guy, and and it, it's it's unfortunate because I'm saying he's weird, but it's just that you can't really have a conversation with him because he'll just stay silent the whole time, and he—it almost seems like you're 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 walking into a, a like an animal's. Uh, uh, you know, cave, and he, they doesn't they don't know how to react to you, and you don't know how to react to it. And so, obviously, she leaves. Oh, he he just knows her a bit, and then she she leaves. She does not sleep with him. I don't know whether she was going to sleep with him, but she, she uh, I think she was so um, disgusted with all the other sort of alpha males at the job, and she just wanted to have a nice night with some guy that she doesn't know, and he seemed sort of meek and timid. Anyway. He becomes obsessed with her, not in a, I would say, a negative way. I guess it is a negative way because he does start leaving, like, these long messages on her phone. Because uh, he did not talk to her that night, and I think he decided to. it's easier to talk to someone when they can't answer back to you, so he keeps talking to her. You, I don't know if you ever get that vibe of, like, him wanting to do something creepy to her or anything like that. As this is going on, because at the very beginning of the film, we see these... Um, there's, it's a really cool production design with these mosquitoes. Uh, when they show the mosquito at the beginning, sort of from birth to eventually going into, uh, it lands inside Richard's um, shirt collar. Uh, the G, the CGI is a little bit too obvious, but whenever you see the mosquitoes from far away, they look great. Like when they're in swirls and like these little torn, these little twisting shapes and stuff like that, they look great. But the film does not become a sort of man controls monster element sort of thing like that. It's more allegorical, and I don't, I'm not clear on what the allegory is. I understand it's a guy who's dealing with bloodsuckers, but it's not like um, he's constantly has a negative reaction to these mosquitoes. First, they bite him, and for some reason, he must feel like the world is sucking his blood out, so at least these creatures that are doing it out of necessity, he accepts them. So then he just like fosters through humidifiers and you know stuff like that. Centronella, I think, is to keep in a certain way uh, from locked out from certain areas. Like then he starts breeding these mosquitoes, and then he'll go to bed and he'll let them drink his blood as he's asleep and stuff like that. And he learns how to control them a little bit. Um, and it eventually they, there's like not much going on other than him kind of progressively getting worse. Uh, with his patience with others at work because when you see a meek guy just getting angry and angrier his disagreements with uh, an asshole co-worker his uh he treats his his uh, secretary slash um assistant like shit sometimes but then that's like back to normal so it's it's really weird because i don't know what the point of the film is because it feels like it should be say saying something more clear and I, it might be like oh it just went over your head um, but I don't think it's that deep because we see him, you know, foster this obsession for this woman. But it doesn't seem like it's a scary obsession. Although the way, you know, he's leaving messages on her phone, I guess it's kind of scary. But it's not like he's saying anything disturbing to her. He's just kind of waxing on about stuff. So then when you, get, when you do get that second opportunity where he meets her, you, you learn her relationship with somebody else. And then he has these sort of vivid nightmares. Uh, or not vivid nightmares, so to speak, but like his social nightmares, but his boss, her, his coworker, stuff like that, and like it, it's lensed in New York City. It looks, it's very gorgeous shots, um, a beautiful, beautifully filmed movie. Um, all the acting is really good in it, uh, but the thing is, that it just didn't fully connect with me, um, especially towards the ending, because the ending made absolutely no sense. I mean it. It's not something that's so um, obscure or so, you know, weird that it wouldn't make sense. Like, we see an action that would make sense for this character, but it's just that his 
him being driven to this sort of weird madness uh, didn't make any sense because he didn't. There's nothing like so crazy that happened to him that he decided to go this route with these mosquitoes. Maybe he's fostered this for a long time um, that he couldn't get this girl or something. But it's just it just doesn't. It, as a narrative for me if it was like a lot of left feel at the choices that he makes towards the end of the film especially but it's a gorgeous final visual in the film but it has if it was like even hinted to or sort of some cyclical element from the first film I guess it could make sense now that I'm thinking about it dealing with water and mosquitoes and stuff like that but it just doesn't fit and it feels like it was a beautiful idea or view, visual beautiful visual idea to start out with and they have it's all great looking but it serves no purpose in the end because it's not a character study if you really still don't know the character you know he's just emotionally detached from people but there's nothing that he does or nothing that happens in the film that sort of bolsters this a action in the movie there's nothing plot wise that goes crazy there's nothing that's like super inventive about the film um so i i i will say it was not i i was not uh, impressed fully by the film visually yes it's a beautiful looking film if you want to play it it's great to look at um it has good very good performances from everybody it has i would like to say that it, if you're for the mood of the film it has um i'm not saying mood as in the same type of film but the look of it and the feel of it is very much Mary Harron's American Psycho film. I'm not saying it's as good as American Psycho. There's no way it's as good as that. But it it has that pristine sort of fake look to it that American Psycho had that I really enjoyed the aesthetic of that film. So this movie has that same feel to it. But I think in the long run, it did not live up to its trailer or visuals. And that's really, it really sucks that that's the case. But... It's a solid looking film, but it, I can't really recommend it as a decent sort of solid storyline to it. So I would give this movie uh, about a five and a half, edging towards a six, you know, because of the look of the film. Um, aesthetics wise, it's a six, but I will give it a five and a half out of ten. Getting some girl a new nice little kitty cat, and she doesn't know what to do with that. And with that, this has been The Hardy Construction.